Honorable Judge Dora and court members. My name is Kathleen McCarthy, and I'm a very close friend of Jesse's. We met two years ago when I was sentenced to four and a half months at WCJ at the age of 70 years old. One week in, I was placed in pod three and was quickly informed about some of the inmates. And first was Jessie. She was known as the Visine killer and was awaiting her murder trial. Somewhat scared, I watched a lot and saw that some inmates treated her as a human being and others as a disease. Not very nice. Jessie pretty much kept to herself, feeling like a leopard and really not knowing how the jail works, especially at my age. Jessie approached me and asked if I'd like to sit at her table, share meals with her, play cards. I accepted. Throughout the next four and a half months, we ate together, played cards together, prayed together. She and I became almost like mother and daughter. Well, with more like grandma, granddaughter. And between our many hours of conversations consisting of politics, religion, our family, pets, friends, her case, her prior bad acts, and likes and dislikes, I got to know the real Jessie. She is a caring, giving person. Many women who come in and go out of that pod have nothing, no family, no money, no friends to help and support them. The food in the jail is absolutely horrible, and I didn't eat much of it at all. Thank God I have a family that cared and could help me out with eye cares and money on my account. The people with nothing were recipients of gifts from Jesse, every last one of them. It was from sometimes body wash, combs, cups, ramen noodles from an eye care, paper, pens, use of the phone of her money to call their loved ones and their kids. After watching her do that, I in turn helped while she and I did this continuously for the time I was there, and she continues to do it today. She also plays peacemaker, if she can, with 25 to 30 women in one area, and you saw how small that area is. The dynamics in there is not always conducive to peace and harmony. I know she had to calm me down on more than one occasion. I truly have never lived like that, nor been treated like that ever. Jessie has been through all of this and still helps people survive and keep them from losing their mind. While, while there, Jessie started a nightly devotion before bed. She starts with something from the daily bread, a Bible reading, or something she was given by the people who hold the Sunday services and prayer groups. She attends weekly. These nightly devotions are still being done every night as of today. Throughout Jessie's time here, she has worked tediously and tirelessly reading over and over her discovery, writing letters for help for her defense, trying to keep her faith through this good and bad news and multiple attorney changes. She prays for the best outcome, knowing she did not kill Lynn. The conviction was a total blow for her, her friends, and her family. As devastated as she is, she continues to work on her own behalf to get an appeal. Her, mo her mother and I talk and work together in any way we can to assist Jesse. Jesse and I speak daily, if not more than once a day, and I visit her weekly and have, and have done so since I have been out these last two years. I am asking the court not to sentence her to life without parole. Even though the jury found her guilty, I believe that she does not deserve that severe of punishment. I would wish that the court 
be lenient as they can and as the law, law allows. Thank you, and God bless us all. Thank you.